How come you're so shy? It was early morning. Ashley was playing on her swing set. She pumped her legs to make the swing go. She went higher and higher. And she sang. Ashley loved to swing and sing, especially when she was alone and no one could hear her. Suddenly, Ashley stopped singing. She heard voices coming from the yard next door. There were her new neighbors, who had just moved in. Hello, Mrs. Rayleigh called to her. Would you like to come over and play with Melinda? Ashley ducked her head and pretended not to hear. Don't be shy, she heard Mrs. Rayleigh say. Ashley sighed. Everyone always said that to her. She looked over at Melinda and her mother. I have to get ready for school, Ashley said. Just then, Ashley's mother called to her. Ashley jumped off the swing and went inside the house. Ashley, said her mother, please go to the bakery and get a loaf of bread for breakfast. But hurry, you don't want to be late for school. Ashley ran down the block to the bakery. She waited in line. Just as it was her turn, a man came into the store and stepped up to the counter in front of her. Mr. Erickson, the baker, looked at Ashley. Isn't it your turn? he asked. Yes, she said softly. Well, don't be so shy, Ashley, said Mr. Erickson. Ashley nodded. She bought a loaf of bread and took it home. After breakfast, Ashley put on her jacket and picked up her books. Why don't you ask Melinda to walk to school with you? asked her mother. But mom, I don't know her yet. That would be a good way to get to know her. Ashley's mother gave her a smile and a hug. Outside, Ashley saw Melinda coming out of her house. Ashley paused. She thought it might be nice to walk to school with Melinda. Hi, Melinda, she said, but her words didn't come out very loudly. Melinda looked away as if she hadn't heard Ashley. Sarah, a girl from Ashley's class, came running down the sidewalk. Come on, Ashley, she yelled. I'll race you to the corner. Okay, said Ashley. She looked back at Melinda and thought, maybe she doesn't want to walk with me anyhow. At school, Ashley watched Mr. Morrill print letters on the board. Ashley wriggled with excitement. She thought she knew what they spelled. Mr. Morrill asked the class, who can tell me what words I've written here? I know, I know, Sarah called out, waving both hands. Ashley wanted to raise her hand too, but she was afraid of being wrong. Mr. Morrill turned to Melinda. Maybe our new girl knows, he said. Can you tell us the words, Melinda? Melinda's face turned pink. I, I, she stuttered. Ashley wondered if Melinda was afraid of being wrong too. She's just shy, Mr. Morrill, Sarah said loudly. That's all right, Melinda, said Mr. Morrill. Then he called on Sarah. I did know the words, Ashley told herself, as she listened to Sarah read them off the board. At recess, Ashley saw Melinda standing alone. I could ask her if she'd like to swing, Ashley thought. Suddenly, Sarah called out. Why don't you talk, Melinda? Melinda ducked her head. Ashley knew why. I pretend not to hear people too, she thought, especially when I don't know what to say. Maybe Melinda and I are alike. You don't have to answer, Sarah, Ashley said to Melinda. Sarah walked up to Melinda and asked, how come you're so shy? Oh, Sarah, Ashley scolded. 
At that moment, Mr. Morrow called to everyone. We're going to play kickball today. Ashley, you'll be one of the captains. Choose your team. Sarah and the other kids danced around Ashley, shouting, Pick me! Pick me! Ashley saw Melinda standing quietly behind the others. She knew how Melinda felt. Suddenly, Ashley knew what to do. Make up your mind, Ashley, said Mr. Morrow. Who's your first choice? Ashley took a deep breath. I choose Melinda, she said. She saw a smile spread across Melinda's face. Ashley smiled too. When school was out, Sarah nudged Ashley and yelled, I'll race you home. No thanks, Ashley said. I want to walk home with Melinda. Ashley turned to Melinda and said, Okay. Melinda looked pleased. Okay, she said. As they walked along together, Ashley said, I think my favorite thing to do is swing. Mine too, Melinda said softly. I love to swing. You do? Ashley began to skip. Then let's go swing on my swings. The two girls laughed as they ran to Ashley's backyard. The girls pumped their legs to make the swings go. As they went higher and higher, Ashley heard someone singing. It was Melinda. Ashley gave a happy sigh, and she began to sing too. Don't be shy. Olivia asked her friends to stand on the steps of 123 Sesame Street so that she could take a picture of them. Just as she was going to snap the picture, she noticed that someone was missing. Mr. Snufflepuggles. Come and get into the picture, Snuffy, Olivia called to him. Don't be shy. Big Bird wanted to play double dutch jump rope with Betty Lou and Ernie. But he needed a partner. Then he saw Snuffy watching. I see you, Mr. Snuffapuggas, Big Bird called. Won't you help me turn the jump ropes? I can't, Bird, Snuffle answered. I don't know how. Come on, Snuffy, Big Bird said. We'll teach you. Don't be shy. Snuffy and Big Bird turned the ropes together and sang while Ernie and Betty Lou jumped. Betty Lou, Betty Lou, turn around. Ernie, Ernie, touch the ground. See, Snuffy, said Big Bird. You're just the right size to help me. Later, you can learn to jump rope too. When Great Aunt Snufflepuggus came to visit, Snuffy was too shy to greet her. This is your Aunt Agnes, said Snuffy's mommy. You haven't seen her since you were a little ball of snuffle fur. Say hello to Aunt Agnes, dear. But Snuffy hid behind his mother. What's the matter, Snuffy? asked Aunt Agnes. Has the cat got your snuffle? When he went to Hopper's store, Snuffy was too timid to ask David for what he wanted to buy. Ernie bought bubble soap and blew colorful bubbles into the air. Bert bought some stripy shoestrings and laced up his saddle shoes. See you later, they said as they went home. Still Snuffy hung back and did not ask David for anything. Finally, David asked, Would you like something, Snuffy? Yes, David, Snuffy answered slowly. I'm... What is it, Snuffy? asked David. May I please have a package of baseball cards? Sure, Snuffy, answered David. Why didn't you say so? I hope I get a Ron adorable card, drawled Snuffy. 
When Snuffy went to Grover's house for lunch, he snuffled down his yummy spaghetti in two minutes, flat. It was so delicious that he wished he could have a second helping. Grover's mother noticed that Snuffy's plate was empty. Would you like some more spaghetti, Snuffy? she asked. And another glass of milk? Don't be shy. One day, the mayor came to Sesame Street. He came to give the prize for the best painting in the Sesame Street Art Fair. And the winner is Mr. Snufflepuggus, announced the mayor. Everybody clapped and cheered. Where's Snuffy? asked Betty Lou. He won the blue ribbon. But Snuffy had disappeared. He was too shy to stand up in front of everyone to accept his prize. At playgroup, the other kids showed their treasures in show and tell. But Snuffy was too shy to show the coach shell Aunt Agnes had brought him from Hawaii. When Miss Tiggy asked if anyone could read the word on the board, Snuffy didn't raise his snuffle, even though he knew what the word said. During music, everyone sang. Sunny day clearing the clouds away. But Snuffy sang so softly that no one could hear his beautiful Snufflepuckle's voice. At his own surprise party, Snuffy was too shy to come out and open his presents. Only when he had blown out the candles on his birthday cake did Snuffy come out of the kitchen. Snuff out all the candles, Snuffy, said Betty Lou. Don't be shy. On the day of the Sesame Street weather play, everyone was getting ready for the performance. Ernie as Ross and Bert as Snow put on their costumes and practiced their lines. Cookie Monster as Wind breezed around them, but S Snuffy felt stage shy. Where's the sun? asked Prairie Dawn to the director. Where is Snuffy? Prairie Dawn found the snuffle stone, sun hiding at the stage curtain. Snuffy, she said, please come out. How can we have to play without you? How can we tell our weather story without you? The sun must come out. Don't be shy. Oh dear, said Snuffy. So the play began. The snow fell and the wind blew and the rain splashed and splished until finally Mr. Snufflepuggus took a deep breath and said in his deep snuffle voice, all right, Prairie, the show must go on. And so the sun came out. When the play was over, the audience clapped and cheered. The actors bowed brow proudly. Mr. Snufflepuggle smiled and waved his snuffle at the audience. Then Snuffy saw Prairie Dawn standing behind the curtain out of sight. He lumbered over and pulled her out onto the stage. Come and take a bow, Prairie, he said. Don't be shy. Shy Charles. Charles was as happy as he could be. But he liked to play alone. He wouldn't talk to Wanda Sue. And he never went near the phone. It's a new day, said Charles's mother. Let's go in the store and say hello. We'll buy a sweet potato pie and we'll say goodbye before we go. Wonderful morning, said Mrs. Belinsky. A chocolate surprise for my beautiful boy. Say thank you, whispered Charles's mother. 
Thank you, yelled Mrs. Belensky. Enjoy. His mother told him, say goodbye. Charles hid inside a flower sack. Goodbye with kisses, said Mrs. Belinsky. Someday, when he's big, he'll kiss me back. I'm so embarrassed, said Charles's mother. You never say goodbye or thank you. Lucky for you that I'm so nice. Any mo other mother would spank you. This can't go on, said Charles's dad. I'm sick and tired of thank you fights. It's time he played football or joined the ballet. Next Tuesday, Charles was in tights. Isn't he sweet? cried Madame Lafleur. Charles wouldn't say maybe or no or yes. For a week, he pretended to be asleep. Charles was not a success. So Charles's father took him to town and bought him some beautiful football things. The shirt was scarlet with shoulder pads. The helmet had silver wings. Charles, said his father, you'll be the best. Like lightning, you'll streak across the grass. Like butter, you'll melt the defensive line. And you'll throw the winning pass. Charles trembled like an autumn leaf. Hi, roared the coach. My name is Fred. He doesn't look so well to me. Take him home and put him to bed. Charles, said his dad, you're a jelly roll. You're just a cowardly custard. You're like a sandwich without the bread, not to mention the ham and mustard. How will you ever go to school or find a job or get married? Charles sat down and cried so hard he had to be carried. Then Charles's father murmured low, A babysitter is coming tonight. You know, the one, it's Mrs. Block, and everything will be all right. The sun went down, the sitter came, his parents left at six o'clock. Charles skedaddled up the stairs. Come back, little pushcake, cried Mrs. Block. Charles played happily in his room. He made a spaceship out of his chairs. Suddenly, there was a terrible crash. Mrs. Block had fallen downstairs. Charles got her onto the sofa. He told her, now don't be nervous. He brought her a blanket and a cocoa. Then he called the emergency service. He saved my life, moaned Mrs. Block. He's a prince, a gem, a hero. And everyone shouted, thank you, Charles. But Charles said, zero.